Olympics on ESPN+. Plus. Tonight, Game 2 of the America East Women's Lacrosse Tournament, the semifinals, Binghamton and Vermont. Hi, everybody. I'm Rich Becker. Along Big thinkers to build better batteries and expand our knowledge of the human brain. From John Fallon Field on the campus of the University at Albany, this is America East Women's Lacrosse on ESPN+. Plus. Tonight, Game 2 of the America East Women's Lacrosse Tournament, the semifinals, Binghamton and Vermont. Hi, everybody. I'm Rich Becker, alongside former Syracuse All-American Alyssa Murray Committee and Alyssa, two very different teams, a young Binghamton team against a veteran Vermont squad. What Coach Stephanie Allen says of her Binghamton team is what they lack in experience, they have in fearlessness. Kenna Newman is... The one, a junior, one of the upperclassmen, but she plays alongside Abigail Carroll, Madison Murphy, who are freshmen and sophomores, respectively. We're on the flip side. UVM has Ava Vassell, Grace Giancola, Taylor Mullen, who are all upperclassmen and are have a lot more experience. A lot of weapons on this Vermont team. That'll be up to Emily Manning to slow them down, the outstanding Binghamton keeper. Manning is coming off with a 10 save game against Vermont just a few days ago, and she's gonna be looking to repeat that success today. She's very tall, she's a steady keeper for them, and has great height who holds strong against fakes. 103 goals this season for Ava Vassell. That'll be a key for Binghamton slowing her down. Coach Dalton Graddick said you can't watch. Underway here at John Fallon Field. Vermont and Binghamton set to in this rather semifinal game, getting the winner will take on UAlbany Saturday at two o'clock. On inside. Good look there and a score right off the rip. As Vermont has checked that as Binghamton gets on the board early, Abigail Carroll getting the job done as she comes in from behind the crease and gets the goal for the Bearcats. A great take, way to get started early. A freshman from Holtzville, New York, her 27th of the year. Comes over the top. Just a good, quick good look finish. there. Beating Sophie McLaughlin, the starting goalkeeper, the 2021. Check that, was Emily Macera Yeah, the it was goal. Macera, it was, yes. okay. Correction on that, we thought it was number two. 21. So Macera has got the goal. Sister of Ellie Macera from Stony Brook, we were talking about earlier in the game, who also scored a goal here last weekend against UAlbany and Stony Brook's season-ending victory over the Great Danes. Back at the circle. This one controlled by the Bearcats once again. Foul at the restraining line. Pascalino now, Bearcats move it to the far side. Sarah nice loses it there. Picked up this time by Carroll. Coach Dalton Graddick talked a lot about how efficient her team is at causing turnovers. And while Vermont didn't come up with that stop, they still got a nice check off, prevented an easy dodge to Cage. Nice save there by McLaughlin. Tripped over the back of the cage there. Got her feet tied up in the net. Still having some issues there. <laughs> now Vermont's first offensive possession here of this game. Carolyn Carrera, outstanding defender, number one in the country and cause turnovers. You mentioned the cause turnovers. Vermont leading the America East, top five in the nation. They are a team that wants to take the ball away and will pressure you at every opportunity. They're also a team that likes to likes to shoot, likes to produce offense. Giancola switches back the other direction. Flag is up. Stick goes across the body. It'll be a free position for the Catamounts. That was a nice dodge to the middle by Giancola to initiate that offense and create the foul. Going hard into the middle, just a cross check across her shoulders, and she's rewarded with this free position. Shot score. 
Giancola gets inside to level the scoring at 1-1 off the free position for Giancola. The senior is wasting no time to get started. A quick jump off that line, protecting her stick as she's going to cage beautifully, finishing around Manning to get Vermont's first goal of the game. We're all tied up. Strong, strong person from the free position spot is Giancola, now eight of 13 on the season. 29 goals for Giancola, 1-1 is our score. Having teams trade goals there is very fitting based off how last, just last Saturday's results were. 11-10 overtime victory for this Binghamton Bearcats team, putting them into the America East Tournament for just the second time in program history. This is Vermont's 10th entry. Neither team has won. Vassal gets inside, nice look there. She just dumped it in, got pushed down. No foul called, Vermont backing it up. Quickly, they put it back into play. Nice defense by Binghamton there. Expect lots of early slides to number three on Vermont. Kluster and Garrity get confused there and turnover unforced error for the Catamounts. This Vermont team 11 and four on the year. Check that 12 and four on the year, which ties the program record for victories in a season back to 2012 when they did that before with 12 victories. Coach Dalton Graddick talked a lot about how appreciative she is of the upperclassmen. When she got the position, many of them had already been committed to the program and she just feels so grateful with the blind faith they've had in her as a coach. Then Creedy looks inside. Murphy gets pushed off the ball. Pass through the eight, picked up by Binghamton, 36 to shoot. Afcam gives it to Newman. 30 seconds to shoot now for the Bearcats. Look inside, nice save by McLaughlin. She gets down low to stop it. Reset clock there. Big play by Binghamton to reestablish possession. behind now the Bearcats bring it out top to Carroll Carroll one-on-one -on -one. jitterbugs to the right shot there as McLaughlin goes nice cross body to make the save McLaughlin's come up huge already a couple of diving saves Binghamton needs to change up where they're shooting rather than right at her feet, putting along the sides of the cage. Herrera came away with that. O'Connor, nice deflection there in front by Cassidy Evans. Flips it back to the goalie, Manning. She'll patiently look for an outlet for this clear. Binghamton clears at an 87.9% rate. Love the ride by Vermont, not making anything easy. Already took off 30 seconds off the shot clock because there's under 60 right now. Evans down in the corner. R relentless by Vermont. Love the pressure. It's exactly what Coach Braddock is looking for. Moscolino far side. Drives on Carrera. Whistle sounds. Three seconds is the call. Be a free position from the Bearcats from the far hash. Yeah. 
save there as McLaughlin comes out to get it. Another second possession by Binghamton. Newman gets inside, stick comes up high, the flag was out. Newman didn't get a shot off, so she'll get a free position. Newman 30% on free position shots this season. 1-1 one, one here, 8.28 left to go first period. Newman shoots high. Good positioning inside by the Bearcats to keep possession. Madison Murphy back there. Now she gets inside on a cage roll, and McLaughlin once again as Murphy shoots high, and McLaughlin's stick was in the right position at the right spot. That was a great dodge. One-on-one -on -one with the goalie. Got a shoot around her, but McLaughlin is having a quick start to this game. Garrity with it. Ballard looks to get inside. She lets it go. Manning goes down to get it. It's been a fun start to the game. So, so much great action by both goalies. Manning adding another save to her tally. Both Seven. teams having a hard time finding the back of the net right now. Seven saves between these two goalies already. Murphy pulls it out as the Bearcats get organized. That there's seven players into the offensive attack zone. Here's Newman. Tancredi and now Kristen Quinn, the Stony Brook transfer. Takes the flip. Now an actual flip to Tancredi, back around the other way. Bearcats running a weave in between the 8 and 12. Nice look inside and a goal for the Catamounts. Check that for the Bearcats. Madison Murphy gets inside for the goal. And the Bearcats have a 2-1 lead with 6.40 to go. We'll take a quick timeout from John Fallon Field. We'll come back, take a look at that goal, finish off this first quarter after this timeout. CEFQ makes it easy to borrow quickly and safely from home and on the go. Let us finance your dreams or help you access the cash you need now. Competitive rates and quick approvals help you save both time and money. Apply today. That's convenience, comfort, and control you can bank on. Visit CEFQ.com to learn more. CEFQ, changing lives every day. Federally insured by NCUA, equal housing lender. Back here at John Fallon Field, one of Binghamton's youngsters once again coming up big with a goal for the Bearcats. Madison Murphy doing a great job coming over the top with her left hand, finding the back of the net. The right pipe pass to the goalie, pass Sophia McLaughlin. Binghamton's had a hard time finding the net around her, and Madison Murphy was able to break the ice there. 23 goals now on the season for the all-rookie team member from 2021. He's had some big scoring outputs this year for the Bearcats as they make their drive to the playoffs for just the second time in program history. Garrity and Afcam at the draw. Bearcats had one too many players out there. Our officiating crew for this one, Lisa Vollard, Laura 
Lisa Volland, Laura Perro, Judy Clark. Devin Holcomb is the table official. Ball still loose, draw scooped up by Grace Giancola. It'll be Vermont ball into the attack zone. 6.26 to go. 2 1 our score. Bearcats on top. Almost Risky a, pass there. Almost errant. Nice job by Mullen to keep it in. Giancola and O'Connor. O'Connor being patient goes far side for Mackenzie Ballard. Goes tightly marking Va Vassil and Giancola opening, which will open up plenty of options for uh, for the rest of the Vermont offense. And here we have a free position. Gabrielle Marshall gets called for the hold. Right at the center hash. It'll be Riley Halloran. Nice save there as Manning gets it off the stick. Bounces right to a teammate, and she's off to the races. Olivia Cosgrove, check that. There's a cause turnover. Gabrielle Marshall lost the ball. Vermont coming back the other direction. Deflected there, but Giancola changes directions to pick it up. She'll get it into the attack zone. Marked by Jamie Golderman. Golderman will get called for the check there. It'll be a free position for the Catamounts. This free position really was set up by a hard ride by Vermont. And causing turnovers is a part of their identity as a team. And as a result, pushing transition and rewarding yourself with a free position opportunity. Let's see if they can get past Manning. Pass out front. Dodge inside. Nice little low submarine shot there. Backed up nicely by the Bearcats. Good work behind the net there by Kelly Quinn. Earns the Bearcats the ball off the errant shot. Always love when a defender can run out the ball. Cassidy Such Evans an gets, energy play. Cassidy Evans got fouled before she stepped on the sideline. Now the ball loose at midfield. One-handed pickup there, or an attempted at one-handed pickup. Now it goes off a player's foot. Back out to midfield, ball still loose. Now it's picked up by the Bearcats and Mar Marissa Tancredi. Little tackle at the 45 <laughs> there. It'll be second down. <laughs> Both teams playing hard. Getting tangled up all over the place. Muscolino out top. She gives it off to Madison Murphy. Murphy scored the second goal of the game for the Bearcats, the one that gave them the lead. Now inside is Newman. Closed off nicely by the Catamounts and Molly McDonough. And shooting space called on the drive to the net. Free position opportunity for the Bearcats and a chance to increase that lead to two. Shot right into the stick of Sophie McLaughlin. Both goalies, again, are, are off to a hot start. Shooters on both teams need to take an extra second to pitch and shoot around the goalie. Good job by the Catamounts to not have an unforced error there as the speedy Carrera has it in her stick. Little She's just instant offense. Kluster now. She's got an opportunity to go right to goal. She'll go instead behind. Bring it all the way outside Garrity now. Down inside. Good crease roll there. Shot score! Good crease roll effort by Taylor Mullen as she comes out from behind the net and gets the low right-hander to go to tie us at two. Taylor Mullen took advantage of the slow break. Even though it wasn't right off the bat transition, Vermont kept moving really quickly through, taking advantage of Binghamton not yet getting marked up, finding Taylor Mullen right on the crease for an easy shot. Mullen, the second leading scorer on the Vermont team, her 28th goal, 41st point of the season. Knots us at two, low scoring first period, really a defensive first period. Both teams strong on defense and getting some excellent work from Manning and McLaughlin in goal. 
with 3.32 remaining in the first quarter. Both coaches are likely going to tell their team, take that extra second before you shoot. You saw there Taylor Mullen just giving a l nice little hitch, shooting around the goalie. It makes all the difference. Binghamton was in his draw circle early, so Vermont will have the ball. Vassal, opportunity to go to net. Three players on her, and she gets fouled down near the hanging hash. Vassal will have a free position from that spot. Jesse Bear gets called for the foul. I have a feeling she's going to go for it. And does and scores inside as she gets just before the goal crease. She lets it fly and gets the goal for Vermont. A player that takes as many shots as Vassal, you got to imagine no matter what hash you get, you're going to the cage and seeing what happens. And it's exactly what she did there. Kind of faked a shot, uh, faked a pass to her teammate, made Binghamton hesitate just for a second. Little hitch shooting right around Manning, off stick side to put Vermont up one. 54th goal of the year for Ava Vassal, a junior out of Milford, Massachusetts. 237 goals in her high school career, more impressively 432 draw controls. That is a whole lot. You know your team's scoring a lot when you have that many draw <laughs> controls. Holding violation called on Vermont, so it'll be Binghamton ball at midfield. Weltner brings it into the zone. Back out top. Now here's Carroll. Bearcats work it all the way around. Murphy will take it, pass it behind. Carroll. And again, a little flip action from the Bearcats. They're not moving the Vermont defense very much. They're gonna need to attack a bit before they flip because right now they're just able to trade off players. It's not that challenging to defend. Weltner with 33. Out top for Muscolino. She's got one-on-one -on -one opportunity. Instead, she passes to the far side. Carroll. Giancola marking her. Good look down inside and an extra little step by Madison Murphy moves the goalie just enough for her to sneak it in top side and make it a 3-2 game Bearcats on top. Beautiful offensive work there. The high to low pass as, you're, as Murphy's coming across the crease. Love to see that movement. And a couple hitches just to freeze the goalie. Makes all the difference. Second goal of the game for Madison Murphy, 24th on the season. And it's a 3-3 game. Vermont getting its draw circle set as Kluster comes over to get into position. Still Afcam and Garrity. Garrity the only player on this field to actually win a championship on this field. Won it in high school at Gilderland High School. The Siena transfer. Picks up the ball there and she'll win the draw Great control. He already takes it in deep and the Cats work it around behind. Just as important as it was to get that ground ball, the box out by Erin Klustra was really impressive. She has the ball now. Moves it on the other side to Mackenzie Ballard. Go, 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 go. 
Ballard gets it checked away, goes back and picks it up. 50 seconds to shoot, plenty of time. Garrity uses the screen. Well defended by her former high school teammate, Jamie Golderman. Binghamton caught in shooting space there. They're playing great man player to player defense there, but caught off, off ball a little too much. Shot goes over the top of the cage. Mullen scoops it up. She'll bring it back into play with 30 to go on the shot clock. 36, 35 seconds to go in the first period. Garrity looks to go to goal. Well defended by Carroll. Now Klustra uses some body to get a space open for a shot. It goes over the end line. Shot 10 seconds to shoot. Going. Good look there. Cats got inside, but the save was made by Manning. 13 seconds to go. Binghamton will try to get it upfield for a quick shot. Not going to be enough time, or not likely going to be enough time to run it the length of the field and get a shot on goal. The clock will, horn will sound to end this first period of play, a very even first period of play, thanks to defense and goalies. Both goalies have been unbelievable so far. Sophie McLaughlin for Vermont, Emily Manning for Binghamton. What an impressive start for them. All tied up. 3-3 after one. chicken place have to be to become the almost number one best-selling shrimp in America. Popeye is kind of good. So give it a try today with our shrimp tackle box for only six bucks. CEFQ makes it easy to borrow quickly and safely from home and on the go. Let us finance your dreams or help you access the cash you need now. Competitive rates and quick approvals help you save both time and money. Apply today. That's convenience, comfort, and control you can bank on. Visit cefq.com to learn more. CEFQ, changing lives every day. Federally insured by NCUA, equal housing lender. The world needs innovators, big thinkers, to build better batteries and expand our knowledge of the human brain. Cutting edge problem solvers who can code, solve ancient puzzles, and design really cool robots. Leaders in their professions who will use their knowledge and experience to improve life across the globe. That's where Binghamton comes in. How good does a shrimp from a chicken place have to be to become the almost number one best-selling shrimp in America? Popeye is kind of good. So give it a try today with our shrimp tackle box for only six bucks. Back here at John Fallon Field, where our score in the women's second semifinal today is square at three between Binghamton and Vermont. On the men's side, the America East tournament going on as well, where the University of Albany will take on the University of Vermont tonight at seven o'clock. The winner of that game will take on Binghamton University, a very tight 7-6 winner over UMBC in our first semifinal today. That championship game Saturday, seven, uh, Saturday May 7th, I should say, at 12 o'clock. You'll see it on ESPNU. And then you can switch over to ESPN Plus and watch us here for the women's final as we'll be at 2 o'clock here on John Fallon Field between the University of Albany and the winner of this game, Vermont Catamounts and Binghamton University. Draw control for the second period is won by the Bearcats of Binghamton. Abigail Carroll comes away with it. Olivia Moscolino gives it off to Madison Murphy. Marissa Tancredi gets into the action, and Vermont settles back on defense while Binghamton settles in on offense. Nice catch down low. Errant pass, but well done there by Moscolino. The Avoid the turnover. Tancredi fakes there. Now she goes back to Carroll. Carroll with 40 seconds on the clock. It's checked hard, maintains possession. Back out top, Moscolino. 
Scheidel had the game winner against Vermont. Gets one here, too, as she puts the team ahead four to three. Bearcats on top. That's just a great pace of play by Binghamton. Everyone's dodging at full speed and creating slides and initiating offense, which makes it really hard to defend there. A great juke to the left, split dodge to her left, comes back to her strong hand once she gets underneath. Bounce shot and in around McLaughlin. I think with the goalies having a hot start, conversation at the break had to have been shooting percentage, faking, moving the goalie, having composure in tight. It's key when the game is on the line, when your season's on the line. Garrity and Afghan. Balls on the ground, scooped up there almost magnetically by Kerry Garrity. Catamounts get their offensive team on the field. Riley Halloran runs on. Move inside. Now the pass behind. Pass is errant. Garrity gets the call. She'll keep the ball. Goes back out to Giancola on the bounce. Plenty of time on the shot clock. Giancola spins inside. Marked there by Golderman. A shot there. Manning makes the save. Picked up by Vassal. And a foul called on the Bearcats just outside the eight. Get another look at some hard contact here inside, but it goes right off the mask of Manning. And then a big hit out front. Seems like they're working out issues with the shot clock here. Move the shot clock down. Is communicating with the press box to make sure the shot clock gets where it needs to be. Twelve forty-nine to go here in the second period. Fifty-four seconds on the shot clock. We're reset and ready to go. Vassal gets inside. Shot there too high. Backed up by the Cats. You'll see Binghamton is really tightly marking Vassal. And Giancola. Garrity fakes the pass inside. A spin move there. It's a ward. Got the arm out too far. The foul going the other way. So after a couple of Chances by Vermont. Binghamton held strong. Golderman carries into the offensive zone. Defensive midi for this Binghamton team. Cats set with, rather, Bearcats set with their offensive set. Double comes by the Catamounts. Nice work there. Good work by Binghamton inside to draw the flag. The shot is off. So the flag gets put away. Masera got a shot off. It went, a, went to the left side of the cage. Binghamton's going to Masera a lot to initiate that first dodge. She's been doing a great job and splitting the double team, almost squeaking one in there. Carroll works at far side with 30. Nevins there to defend. Spin move by Newman gets inside. Ball comes out of the cross. It's loose. Picked up there by Binghamton. They'll keep it with 18 seconds on the shot clock. Back out front, it's Carroll. She's got an open path. Shot there, saved by McLaughlin. Shot clock resets. Ball still loose. McLaughlin comes away with it, plays it back into her circle. The lob pass to the outside, and the Catamounts will try to transition 
quickly up the field with Molly McDonough. Good speed by McDonough, the senior out of Arbor, Pennsylvania. She just keeps rolling right to Cage. Looks down inside and a goal. Pretty look there as Taylor Mullen gets the goal. Taylor Mullen is the player on the crease that is benefiting from her teammates just causing a lot of action on the top side of the eight meter. And a lot of credit to Vermont pushing that fast break. Binghamton was completely watching the ball and unsettled situations taking advantage is Taylor Mullen composure right on the crease not thinking about that shot too long and just seeing past the goalie finding the back of the net we're all tied up for 20, second of the day 29th goal of the season for Mullen 4-4 four, four our score with 10-27 to go We're in for a fun one today. Good transition. Really impressed by Molly McDonough's speed. Snapped out of the air by Garrity. Garrity held scoreless in the game last week. Vassal gets inside and stick in the sphere. She'll draw a free position. Vassal's 29th free position of the season. She's converted on 18 of them. If you can do that percentage in your head, you're better than I am. <laughs> it's pretty good. Vassal inside, and she punches it in with her right hand. And Vermont takes the lead 5-4 with 10-11 to go here in the second period. Vermont needs Vassal to score goals for them to win, and that's exactly what she's doing. Creating offense, forcing a foul there, and then cashing in on the free position. A quick start off the line. You see she hedges towards the middle of the eight meter to give herself a better angle. The goalie steps off the pipe and she puts it right back on that near pipe. It's a great shot, really nice composure by the veteran. Now 55 goals on the season for Ava Vassell with her two today. Vermont once again controlling the draw. Vassal comes away with it. They slip inside. Pushed outside by Golderman. Catamounts work it back out top. O'Connor patient. Gives it off to Giancola. He'll start her move one on one. Gets down inside, nice move there by Giancola, and she scores. Quick first step around to get to the right side of the defender. She went right to Cage. A really, really nice goal there by Giancola, showcasing her speed, too. And Binghamton is guarding her pretty far out, and here they just gave her too much room to work with, get a full head of steam, and she just ran downhill to Cage. Really pretty goal. Forces a Binghamton timeout. Two goals on the day for Grace Giancola. 30 on the season. She's given Vermont a two-goal advantage here at Fallon Field.
back here at John Fallon Field. Vermont on top, 6-4. to four. The Catamounts try to advance to the championship game for the first time in program history. If they do that, they'll take on the UAlbany Great Danes, a 16-13 winner over UMBC earlier today here on the UAlbany campus. Sarah Falk and Katie Pascal, five goals each for Katie Thompson's UAlbany team. One right there by Sophia Afkam. Played back to Golderman, who will go deep into the Vermont attack zone. And Binghamton will start from the back out. Nice clear there by Binghamton. A key draw control. Stop the momentum of Vermont. See if they can get quality shots off. McLaughlin's done a nice job in goal so far. S seven saves already. A couple of beauties early on. Score right there. Fast ball movement. Beautiful. Bearcats get that stick check back. Murphy one more time as Madison Murphy gets the goal there. Madison Murphy has had a great start to the game. Binghamton just really sharing the ball there and that's something Coach Allen mentioned is Callie Hartshorn is her assistant coach who comes from Maryland and the style of play at Maryland is everyone ha has the ability to score, everyone is a threat, and that's something that she's really implemented for Binghamton, and it's showing today. Just that freelance kind of style, not necessarily a set play. If you've got a good option to go to goal, go to goal. Afghan wins another one. Triple team there, it gets checked from behind. She scoops it back up. Good stick work there by Weltner to get it into the offensive zone. Even when Binghamton is coming up with the draw, Vermont is so relentless with that pressure. Sarah Dalton Gratic talked about that. You want to be aggressive everywhere we possibly can be. That's why this team does such a nice job taking the ball away. Nice save there by McLaughlin on the shot from Smacera on the side. Quickly out to Carolyn Carrera. Nice pressure by Binghamton. Dumped down to that far side. Mullen gives it up to Garrity. Ballard. Screen set. Ballard now one on one. Loses the ball inside, scoops it back up. Bearcats pressuring hard. Back around behind. Mullen comes out. Lob pass toward the center. Nobody there, but a whistle sounds. Foul on the pass. Unfortunate. It looks like a cross check. Otherwise, could have been a turnover there. Just kind of a blind pass toward the center of the eight. Instead of the be Mullen to put it back into play from the dot. All the way around. Vassal straight to goal, score! Too easy for Ava Vassal as she goes right down the middle. Gives the Catamounts back a two goal advantage. That's someone that Binghamton cannot lose on the defensive end. She is key for Vermont and she's cashing in today already. They're gonna need to limit her for the rest of the game here. She just runs right down the middle, uncontested, and Vassal is experienced enough, talented enough that she's going to score on that almost all the time. It's her third of the game today. Moves into fourth place all time for goals in a season. Moves into second place all time for most points in a season, does Ava Vassal. In the midst of a fantastic year and still with at least one more year of eligibility F left for these Catamounts, just a junior. Add three goals 
on nine shots the last time these two teams played, last Saturday. Game that Binghamton won to get themselves into this tournament. Bassel with the ball in her cross again. Worked last time, try it again! No, waved off. Offensive foul as Vassal made contact coming down the middle. No goal there. Vassal will need a second to get the goggles back on. So referee Laura Perro gives her that moment and now we'll restart. Cross check there at midfield. The double whistle generally means a card and that is indeed what will happen. As Taylor Mullen will go off for two minutes. Taylor Mullen looked like she was trying to draw a charge in the open field. Very difficult to do. And just extended those arms too much. Called an egregious cross check there. And Binghamton is player up now as a result. Clock actually started about three seconds before the whistle there, so they penalty be a minute 57 instead of two minutes. Bearcats 14 women up goal goals this season. Good defense inside, and then the foul called on the back half of that defense on Klustra. Did a good job up front, but then looked like the cross got across the body, so the call was made there, and it'll be McCarroll with an opportunity on the free position. That initial catch was a really, really nice handle by Carroll. We'll see if she can cash in. Nice save there by McLaughlin as she stands tall. Carrera comes away with it. Switches directions, lobs it out towards the middle for Vassal. She'll pick it up at midfield, take it toward the attacking zone. Seems like Vassal is all over the field. Her team's just always looking for her. Uh, you mentioned earlier, Sarah Dalton Graddick said, when you watch this game, you cannot not see Ava Vassal on the field. Vassal out top. Just a shade under five minutes to go here, first half. 34 seconds left in the, in the woman up situation. Too much contact there, whistle sounds. Giancola. Catamounts being patient, trying to burn off the rest of this penalty before going to net. O'Connor, all the way across for Giancola. She's one-on-one -on -one with Golderman. Gets some backside help. Now goes to X. Here comes Mullen. Missed her there. Carrera's got an opportunity to corral that and nice does just ball. that. Good work there by O'Connor to get onside to avoid the offside call. Shot clock violation. Good defensive set by the Binghamton Bearcats. As things got a little helter-skelter at the end. And now the Bearcats back in business going the other direction. Alex Hauser takes it in. Tosses it back behind X and hustles back to get to the proper side of the restraining line. That'll allow Tancredi to get onto the offensive side of the field. Moving it around behind. Nice opportunity for some of these players to get out and explore the Albany campus today. Saw a lot of Binghamton and Vermont colors on the academic podium. Just kind of taking a look around. Shot clock is starting to wind down. Mascalino got one off there, but wasn't on. It was on cage, so 
He'll get his shot Good clock job. reset. Nice check by Vermont. Thought Binghamton would have another fresh 60 seconds, but. O'Connor gets fouled in midfield, keeps going. Mullen behind her. Two and a half to play here, first half. Vassal back outside. She'll give it to Klustra. Garrity now. Pass in front. Ball's loose. Scooped up there. Possession change, so the shot clock is reset. Check from behind, and Klustra goes into the crease with her stick as she tried to check Manning. Quinn gets it checked. No one there for Vermont, so she can pick it up and does. The constant ride by Vermont is just really impressive. Even in an instance like that where Binghamton maintains possession, it really wears on a team, constantly feeling like there's pressure. It makes you make uncharacteristic mistakes when you're feeling rushed and feeling like, feeling the pressure. and. Ultimately, that's the style of play that Vermont is looking for. Carroll. Three players there. Muscolino lets it go between three Vermont players. Gets it over the shoulder and sneaks a goal home. A really, really nice shot there by Muscolino. Kind of made me think about when Coach Allen said they're fearless. Yes. Freshman, fearless. Why not? Why not try to take a shot from the eight meter in a semifinal game through three players? She did a great job not following through into any of the defenders. Otherwise, she would have been on the sideline with a yellow card. Really, really nice time shot. Muscolino, the freshman out of Baldwinsville, New York, had a goal against the Catamounts in the last two times these teams met. Started every game this Every game except for senior day this year, she started. Second leading score on this team, now with 25 goals on the year. She and Newman. And actually Madison Murphy now, that's right, with three goals today. They all three of them have 25 goals on the season. Ball bounces around, scooped up there by Afcam. She's done a nice job on the draw circle not only getting the ball in the position where she needs it, but then picking it up on her own. And maintaining composure. The press from Vermont goes right to her every time she gets that possession, and she's handling their pressure really well. Murphy comes back in. And she's got the ball with 30 seconds left in the first half. Now it's Tancredi with it. Little pick and roll doesn't work as Vermont defended it nicely. Ball flips out, picked up on the run by McDonough. She's got 17 seconds going the other way. We know she's, she's got, got good got speed. It. Look at that speed. Golderman matching her nicely. Whistle sounds. And Golderman will go off for contact to the head with 10.3 seconds to go. It's going to be an automatic yellow card getting hit in the face there. Really, really impressive speed, though, by Molly McDonough. Forcing Golderman, really, to come in hard, and she just came in a little too heavy there. And now Vermont is player up, taking advantage. Pass to the center. Whistle sounds. Increased violation. Clock will run out before Manning can do anything with it. So a close battle last weekend between these two teams that went all the way to overtime before Binghamton was able to win it. We've got a close one here again. It's been a great game so far. Really, really fun to watch. Six to seven. Vermont in the lead coming back with the player up for almost the full two minutes. Should be an exciting second half for us. Halftime festivities coming up here at John Fallon Field, including stats and highlights after this timeout. You're watching America East Women's Lacrosse Tournament Action here on ESPN+. Plus.
Albany Esports is a really special new initiative supported by the university. Um, Esports is competitive gaming, so we have a team of over 140 students. We play colleges across the United States. We play over 300 games per year, which is pretty amazing to think about the scale um, which we operate. We offer over a dozen games, and we have students of all class years and all majors. So it's really an amazing community of students interested in games and in competitive gaming. Uh, one of the exciting things about esports is also we have classes and we have programs supporting students who are interested in this field. So we have a class in esports, we have a newly um, approved concentration in game design and development in informatics, we have a social game night where students get together every week. We have over, I think, 500 students and we just play games. It's not a class, it's not graded, it's just another opportunity to socialize, to meet people, to connect with other students. And um, it's, it's really a, a wonderful um, community of students interested in gaming here on campus. Here in the Capital District, we have over 500 full-time employees working in the game development sector. We have some of the biggest game studios in the world uh, with offices right here in the Albany region. We are very fortunate to have folks from industry come to campus, work with students. We had the State of Grace event focused on women in technology. And we had an entire day where we invited folks from the game design and game development studios to speak with students, to join panels, to offer workshops. So we're very fortunate for the game development cluster here in the region. And our students are going on to work in the field. The game development industry is one of the most interdisciplinary uh, industries that there is. It incorporates elements of coding, design, art, music, writing, and then on the technology side, you have cybersecurity, you have networking, um, you know, you have all of these different aspects that come together. So it's a really special um, opportunity being right here in Albany and having so many great industry partners around us. I think that's another way community engagement, community involvement works in that we're connected to industry. Back here at the America East Championship semifinal action between Binghamton and Vermont. We got a good one. Vermont leading Binghamton by a 7-6 score. Let's take a look at some highlights from the first half. And it really was Binghamton getting out to an early start. Emily Macera. Macera got things going quickly. A really nice fake underneath rolling over the top to get the first goal for Binghamton. Goalie play outstanding early on. Sophie McLaughlin has 10 saves already. She stepped up huge for them. And then... Emily Manning off to a great start, too. That's a really nice save down low for her. She has three so far. Seen some good stuff from some of the youngsters from Dingham, as we expected, especially Murphy. 
Murphy has been leading the way for Binghamton. She's got, like you said, a hat trick already. She's creating beautifully. A little shake and bake there. Scheidel gets inside for a nice one. The freshmen are just really, really taking advantage. And then for Vermont, you see a little 3v2 on the side with Mullen taking advantage right on the crease. She's cashed in a couple of times, long, as well as Giancola right down the middle. Too easy for her. Nice little three goal run for Vermont there. Murphy again with a beautiful, beautiful shot. Off ball, she's doing it all with the ball, off ball, multi-threat, and then Vasil, you can't miss her. Right down the middle, untouched, taking advantage for Vermont. Three she's goals, their leader. Three goals for Vassal so far, 7-6 lead. We take a look at the first time, first half statistics, and the turnover is really the, the stat that stands out. Vermont having eight turnovers to Binghamton's two. It's really, really gonna, it can really hurt them down the line if they can't clean things up. They cause a lot of turnovers, but they wanna limit their own. Second half action coming up here. We'll see if the Vermont team can limit those turnovers in the second half and get to the championship game for the first time ever. We're back after this. See if he looks over there after I say this. Everyone happy to see that sunshine here over the campus of the University of Albany, Vermont, leading Binghamton in game two of our America East Championship semifinal. We're set for second half action. As Carrie Garrity and Sophia Afkin are at midfield ready for the draw. Draw control very fairly even, 8-7 in favor of the Catamounts in the first half. Ball loose, picked up by Binghamton. Murphy comes out of there with it and then escapes down toward the middle of the field. Check that, that's Scheidel, 39. Whistle sounds. Shot clock reset to a full 90. Minute 30 to go on the existing penalty to Binghamton's number 24, Jamie Golderman, a holdover from the first half. have to assume that Binghamton will be pretty deliberate. Burn as much time as they can here. Just move it around the outside and watch the scoreboard. Vermont not pressing out. So it looks like they're going to really be able to take their time and be smart with the ball. Less than a minute to go on the penalty now. seconds to go on the penalty. Binghamton picking up the pace a little bit now. Carroll. 
back out top. Great defense by Vermont. 15 on the penalty, 10 on the shot clock. Binghamton will have to go to net before this penalty expires. Three to shoot. Good defense by the Catamounts. Nice move inside. Shot clock violation, though, as Mealy couldn't get the shot off. Quickly, the Catamounts the other way. Slowed down there with a check as Charlotte Nevins. And she dumps it off, and the Catamounts get it into the attacking zone. Giancola has it. Garrity, the one on one, and shooting space is the call as she draws the foul. Cassidy Evans gets called for that. Evans just caught in a tough spot there. Not much she can do about that. Garrity gets inside, moves the stick and scores. Kerry Garrity inside for the Catamounts to extend the lead to eight to six. That's a couple little extra fakes there to move the goalie. That was really nice patience by Garrity off the line. Watching the official to blow the whistle, just tucks it right underneath and makes her, makes her angle of the shot that much better. The, the more she gets to the middle of the field, gives herself more time able to move the goalie, tucks it back on the near pipe. Really, really patient. 11 goals on the season now for Carrie Garrity, the transfer from Siena College, who after her time at Siena was all done playing lacrosse. She wasn't gonna play, spent some time with family in Vermont after a family member's passing, decided that she did wanna play a little bit more. Vermont had a program that she wanted to get into, and it all worked out for Sarah Nelson Braddock to get an outstanding player in Carrie Garrity. And she was waiting for her, she, she had mentioned. And a delay of game card being given by official Judy Clark. A one minute penalty on Abigail Carroll. Non-engagement non penalty, I believe, just for kind of knocking the ball away. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Unfortunate for Binghamton. A little bit of a lack of composure, mental error. I'm sure Coach Allen is gonna talk to Carol about just maintaining composure through frustration and. Having a conversation is Coach Allen right now with Devin Holcomb, the table official. Vassal lays it off far side. Woman up opportunity here for the Catamounts. Nineteen women up goals this year for UVM. Halloran back behind. Now in front. Bounce shot there by Giancola doesn't go. She just gets to the cage so hard. She's fun to watch. Garrity. Giancola now. Ballard from behind, out top. Vassal draws the double. 30 seconds to go, the penalty releases, we're even strength. Mullen, Vassal, score! Nice look by Mullen to find Vassal right in front, a couple of quick fakes by the junior, and she's got another goal, her fourth of the night. Really nice offensive work by Vermont. Their bench is fired up for that goal. goal Mullen finding Vassal. Binghamton just getting a little bit disorganized there. Still kind of a player down as they're adjusting as Carroll was running back in. And Vassal had the recognition that they were still at an advantage and just took it right to Cage. Just started the second half and she's already got four. Binghamton's got to find out a way to slow her down. Moving herself up the ranks in the Vermont record book. Now 57 goals on the year, tied for third all time, best in a single season. Lynn Jordan from the class of 84. That one sticked away. 
Kluster with good speed to go after it. Had an opportunity to pick it up, but missed the ground ball instead of to go to the Bearcats. A foul there on Kristen Scheidel. Like Whistle will sound, and I think we're getting another card. Indeed, we are. Both teams need to clean up, clean up the action with their sticks a bit. Make sure both coaches wanting a little bit cleaner play. Ballard goes off for two. Second woman up opportunity for the Bearcats. We'll work it around looking for the opportunity as nightfall begins to arrive. Stadium lights will start to take over for the sun. Back behind the decks. Newman, scoreless today. Flips to Murphy. Outside. Kloostra stays put at the eight on defense. Swing it near side. Weltner shoved off the play. Now dumped inside to a wide open Tancredi. Couldn't connect, but still the rebound comes back to the Bearcats and Weltner puts it home. A little bit of a mishap in the middle there. Tancredi dropping the ball, but Weltner very aware, cashes in, finds the ground ball and just tucks it in the bottom left corner. Great shot selection. Just in and out of her stick, really quick, not allowing McLaughlin to get settled and find where the shooter was coming from. Tough going cross cage like that. Her body's moving to the right, but yes, she was able to score to the other, our right, and she was able to score to the goalie's right. It's a difficult shot to place, but also really difficult to stop. So great shot there. Pull one back for Binghamton. Jen Williams on the draw control that time. First time someone other than Kerry Garrity has taken it. Vermont comes away with it with Kloostra. Kloostra's been great on the circle. She's been involved in so many of those 50-50 balls. Four draw controls so far for Kloostra. Kustra out top, goes far side. Ballard, now back inside. Opportunity closed off there for Halloran. Vassal, switches sides, shoved down there. Foul just outside, just on the eight rather. She draws so much contact. She just is always dodging and Binghamton needs to do their best to keep her away from the eight meter. But here she has another free position opportunity. Vassal lays it off. Nice defense there by the Bearcats. A hold on Vassal. Play it back to Manning. Great pressure. Bearcats try the other side now with Evans. She'll take it into the attack zone. She's got an opportunity. It's pushed off it. McDonough tried for the trail check, and there's a foul down near B local and extended. The Bearcats ball at the dot. back on side and Tancredi goes in on the offensive side with 8.20 to go here in the third. Far side it's Bearer and she passes it around the outside. Around the perimeter go the Bearcats. Vassal gets a rest and Garrity comes on. Sticked away there by Carrera, nice work. She is the queen of cause turnovers and 
She just showed why. Number one in the nation. Garrity with an opportunity unsettled, although Vermont does not have numbers. Metal Helm down low, she gets it back out top. Giancola has it, they'll hold on for a second. Get Megan O'Connor back on the field for Vermont, and now they're seven on seven. Giancola out top. Ballard now, one on one. Rethinks that, goes to Giancola. She looks inside. Now she'll go, player down in the eight, and a whistle sounds. Shooting space is the call. Be on the far side, free position for Mackenzie Ballard. Those strong dodges up top by Vermont are initiating slides and just as a result, drawing shooting space because as Binghamton tries to recover, they're with, caught too far away from the girl with the ball. Ballard scooped up there nicely by Emily Manning. Fourth save of the game by Manning. Second whistle there as they get into the attack zone. Nine seven our score. Vermont on top and what's been somewhat a back and forth game. Binghamton getting out to the early advantage. Down and low, Newman lets it go with a spin around shot. Her first goal of the night cuts it to a 9-8 advantage for Vermont. We'll take a look at that one after this timeout. 6-10 to go here in the third. good does a shrimp from a chicken place have to be to become the almost number one best-selling shrimp in America? Popeye's kind of good. So give it a try today with our shrimp tackle box for only six bucks. phrase. It's the intellectual nourishment that surrounds us at the University of Vermont. Those ideas, that atmosphere, those classes that get us up in the morning and keep us up at night. Food for Thought connects us to other hungry thinkers, thinkers who will change your world, like this one, or even this one. All the food for thought in the world is on the menu at the University of Vermont. Let's dig in. How good does a shrimp from a chicken place have to be to become the almost number one best-selling shrimp in America? Popeye's kind of good. So give it a try today with our shrimp tackle box for only six bucks. Back here at John Fallon Field where the game just got a little bit closer thanks to Kenna Newman's outstanding effort in the middle of the eighth. Newman's been quiet so far. She's one of their key players, and it's great that she's able to get involved finally for Binghamton. They're going to need her to pour a couple more in, and there she's just catching it off ball, beat her player into the middle, and gave her a little rocker dodge and found the opposite pipe. Newman with points in every single game this year except for the game against Vermont last week, so you know she wanted to get a tally here, and a big one there as she draws her Bearcats team within one. Sometimes that's all it takes to get on a roll. And Binghamton surely could use it. Half Cam and Williams at the draw circle again. This time Giancola comes with a nice outside spin to clear all of the people that were around her. She has so much power. Brings it back outside to get Vermont into a settled situation with five minutes and 49 seconds to go here in the third. Vermont 
Vermont being very deliberate. First 30 seconds of the shot clock here. Vassal gets the screen from Garrity. They try the pick and roll, well defended by the Bearcats, especially Jesse Bearer. Back behind. Now Vassal, watched by Golderman. Always some help near Vassal. Nice, nice work defense. by Golderman to take it away. That was great defense by Vasserman. Binghamton is in a zone. Still think that they need to make sure that they're making contact with Vassal at way, well away from the eight meter. That way, if there is a foul, they're not giving her a free position. They've caught, got caught too far inside the eight meter a couple times with her. Garrity had Mullen coming out from behind the net. Mullen went all the way across in front of the crease. Let it go, five seconds left. Good pass there as, as uh, O'Connor came in from nowhere, but couldn't quite connect as the shot clock ran down. Really nice stop by Binghamton. It's exactly what they need. Going down the other end. They've done a great job maintaining composure against the Vermont ride. We've said plenty of times that Vermont is relentless on the ride and Binghamton's handled that pressure very well. At the four minute mark here of the third as Binghamton moves it around behind the cage. Murphy, back out front bear, moving to the far side. 36 on the clock for Muscolino. Murphy got bumped off that as she was trying to make a move to the toward the net. Bear moves it near side to Weltner. Weltner 1v1 with Carrera. Goes inside, bounce shot there, goes over the end line, backed up by the Bearcats. Lucera is gonna need to initiate quickly. High pass there, good look by Bearer, hits the post. Rolled into the crease there from McLaughlin, a crease violation. It'll be Catamount's ball with three minutes to go. A nice look there, unfortunate to hit the post. Herrera gets through that mess and gets it into the attack zone. Out from behind. Alwyn tries to go between two, thinks smarter of it, Klustra. Vassal, over to Travis. You can see Vermont sending those cutters, but. Adelhelm's pass intercepted by Golderman. Nice pick off there. It's one of the benefits of playing a zone compared to player to player defense. And Offside called on Vermont, so a full reset of the shot clock, a full 90 as we hit the two minute mark. It's the second time Vermont has been called on that in this quarter alone. And you never want to give your opponent that much more time after you, you try to redefend and take some time off the clock. Officials come together for a conversation right near the restraining line. Judy Clark's going to come over for an explanation. It's Binghamton a chance, or check that, Vermont a chance to make a sub. They get Kenzie Baskew off. Be an issue with the clock. Coach what? Allen hoping to vouch for her players. 70, 
four seconds on the shot clock was the reset question. Less than two minutes to go here in the third. Multiple passes again by the Bearcats. Fake there. Murphy goes to the middle. Carroll gets inside. Bounce shot there. She Saved is so the, shifty. Saved over the end line with 44 on the clock. 126 in the game. In the period, rather. I have no idea how Binghamton held on to that possession. Scheidel did an excellent job coming out of there. She almost had it on her backhand. Now Carroll, so shifty. So quick. Her love to watch her change of direction. Seems like she's got endless amounts of energy. Newman spins back inside. Can't get a shot off there. An offensive foul as Newman ran into the defender after she laid the pass off. So with the clock rolling and 50 seconds to go, it'll be Vermont ball, shot clock off. Opportunity for the Catamounts to extend their one goal lead to two and gain some momentum for the fourth quarter. Nice defensive stand by Vermont there. A little helter skelter at times with Binghamton tossing it into the middle and they held strong. Ball down, picked up there by Binghamton, and a foul called. Binghamton needs to move quickly here. Vermont doing a good job slowing the ball down, looking like time will run out before Binghamton gets a ch chance. Possible opportunity if she lets it go. Can't see the clock. No clock awareness there, so a shot that could have happened for the Bearcats did not. Pulled back out, 9-8 our score as we get ready for fourth quarter play. It's gonna be a good one, so stick with us folks. America East Women's Lacrosse, semifinal action here on ESPN Plus. University of Albany, the host of this year's 2022 America East Women's Lacrosse Tournament. The Great Danes already into the championship game, a 16-13 win over UMBC earlier. Vermont and Binghamton, a one-goal separation here as we decide which team will join them Saturday, 2 o'clock here on John Fallon Field for the championship. Some, some defensive changes that perhaps you're seeing out there that, that may be helping out as far as slowing the goal scoring down. Binghamton made a nice adjustment going into a zone and just getting a few knockdowns and changing it up, not making it very easy for Vermont to just pass the ball around, find the open cutters. They are gonna need to step outside of the eight meter though. I'm thinking that it, there could be a few more free positions awarded than they would really like to if they allow Vermont to really catch the ball close to the eight meter and then challenge, especially with the number of fouls that have been called so far in this game want to be aware of that, that they're making contact outside the eight meter. Vermont sticking with Jen Williams at the draw. She's been in on the last handful of them after Carrie Garrity took most of the early ones. 
Sophia Afkam handling the duties for Binghamton. Bounding ball toward the restraining line. Picked up first by Vermont. Binghamton then scoops it up and gets fouled. It'll be the Bearcats ball. Scheidel with it. She lays it off. Straight line to goal. Travis had an opportunity there, but defender stepped in near the end. A smart play to pass that off to a teammate. Bring it all the way across near side. Carroll. Nice. Shot there, deflected. Nice defense there. And run out by Vermont. No backup by Binghamton. Good hustle by McLaughlin to be among the players back there. McDonough showing that speed again and getting it up ahead to Ballard. Back out top to Giancola. All intents and purposes, the point guard on this offense. Overtime game last Saturday. One goal game today between these two very evenly matched teams in green. Look inside. Halloran had nothing. Back outside of Giancola with 40. Halloran from behind. Good look there. Couldn't connect with O'Connor, but it comes all the way back outside to Giancola. Now behind. Vassal, spin move. Good defensive help by the Bearcats. Nice catch in the middle. Vassal gets a shot off. It'll stay with Vermont. Smart adjustment by Vermont against Binghamton zone, moving Vassal down towards the crease. That's where they're getting a lot of their open looks. And to move your one of your best players down there is a good decision. Intercepted there by Golderman. Second cause turnover the game for Jamie Golderman. Binghamton would love to cash in on a goal here. Tancredi moves it to Carroll. As they go all the way around the horn and back down below goal line extended. Opportunity for Scheidel. Back out top to Carroll. Carroll gets doubled as she enters the eight. Steps back out with 38 to go. Three seconds is the call. Scheidel will have the free position on the nearest hash. Sprints inside, Scheidel lets it go, and it goes in. A goal for Scheidel, Kristen Scheidel. Looks like they're giving Binghamton the ball. Penalty after. Scheidel, a great start off the line. Tucks underneath, big swipe by McDonough. Nice composure by Scheidel to still find the back of the net there. She seems a little shaken up. Second goal of the night for Scheidel. Just looking to see, okay, so just a regular foul then, not a card. Looks like they're not, they're not awarding Binghamton with the ball after all. We'll just go to after the discussion down near the goal. The officials decide to go back to a regular draw, no foul. 11-41, we're square. Vassal, nice move there, gain possession. Really nice box out. 
Vassal goes right down the middle to goal. Shot score. Vassal. Like a hot knife through butter as she takes it there and gives Vermont back the advantage. Unbelievable. Great stick protection. Vassal with another goal. Just picking it up right off the draw. Showed a great box out to establish possession and just gets running and just Binghamton just slid with their stick. They need to slide with their body, get in front of her, try to draw a charge and got a timeout. Vermont's up 10-9 in the fourth quarter, 11-27 to play. Back here at John Fallon Field, where Vermont's on top 10 to 9 over Binghamton on the men's side. Already advanced is the are the Binghamton Bearcats with a 7-6 win over UMBC. Right now, second quarter, Vermont on top of the University at Albany. Three goals for Haley so far for UVM. Hay and Fingar with goals for the University at Albany. Vermont looking to advance to the championship game for the second consecutive year. That one May 7th, the 12 o'clock start on ESPNU and then our championship game here on the women's side at 2 o'clock on ESPN+. Plus. Hope you'll join us for both some excellent postseason lacrosse with the winners headed to the NCAA tournament. Set to go here, 11.26 to go in the fourth. One goal game as Golderman comes away with it, gets knocked down, it'll stay with the Bearcats. Nice draw by Golderman. Establishing position, possession for Binghamton. Errant pass there, though, goes back to the Catamounts. Mullen coming down the sideline, draws the foul. Vassal works it around far side to O'Connor. Vermont gets settled. With a one goal lead, you can afford to be patient. Vassal gets the screen from O'Connor, doesn't use it. Giancola goes back behind. Garrity, good look there for O'Connor. Down low, spin move by Vassal. It's met defense. A, yeah, met immediately by McDonough. Giancola near side. Mullen tries to get through and does. No shot, Giancola. Shooting space is the call. Unfortunate for Binghamton. I thought they were marked up in front of the cage. But what I say does not go. <laughs> Giancola will now have an opportunity. Giancola, 7 of 12 on the year from the free position, Ash. Gets inside and scores. Fakes left, goes right. 
Grace Giancola's got a goal, and Vermont's got itself a two-goal advantage. Giancola has been outstanding in this game. Again, another free position shot, creating a better angle by going towards the middle. Manning steps away from that pipe even more and just opens up plenty of space for Giancola to take advantage on the near side. She's a hat trick today, but what also stands out is just her play all over the field. She's been explosive everywhere, off the, off the draw, bringing the ball up in the midfield. Coach Dalton Graddick talks a lot about how much they sub so everyone's fresh and just of how much a threat her midfielders have been all game really, really shows that. Giancola, really a great story of resilience, a player that's twice had an ACL tear and had to fight back from that. Really did a nice job working hard to get back into this lineup and making a big difference in every game this year for the University of Vermont, but especially tonight. You love to see a player come back from an injury like that. It, it's so hard to see a, players go down every year with season-ending injury like that. But it's even better when they come back and can score big goals like that. Push over on the sideline. A lot of pressure by Vermont. Tight contact there by Camille Argentieri. Behind, nice look inside, but couldn't connect. Bum Binghamton, I want to get Newman involved. She's been quiet today. Just that one goal so far. Whistle sounds, and the free position will go to Binghamton on the hanging hash. It'll be Kristen Scheidel. It's a tough angle, so Scheidel pulls it back outside. Right back inside. Taken away by the Catamounts. Carrera comes away with it, gets fouled foul, there. Yeah, that's gonna be a and that's going to be a card. 8.39 mark of this fourth period. Muscolino. A little bit of a frustration foul. Arms straight out into Carrera. That's an easy one for officials to call. So woman up opportunity, down two goals. Check that, up two goals, a woman up opportunity for the University of Vermont. Vermont has the opportunity to really take control of the game here if they can cash in. Especially after winding the clock down a good bit. Giancola over here to Ballard, near side, spins inside, got an opening to the cage and she scores! Ballard changes sides with the cross and gets the goal. That puts the Catamounts up by a triple. So they may have not wound that much clock down, but they still cashed in and Vermont takes a three goal lead, taking advantage of the Muscolino yellow card. Great ball movement around the outside. You can see the Binghamton defense just spinning. And Mackenzie Ballard just taking it to the cage. First goal of the game for Ballard. 23rd of the season and a timeout taken by the Bearcats, now down by three. Stephanie Allen getting into that, or rather, Sarah Dalton Graddick getting into that huddle to Keep the team fired up, keep that energy level up is what the Catamounts want to do for the next eight minutes and five seconds. Meanwhile, Stephanie Allen on the other side trying to figure out exactly how they can stem this tide. 126 on the penalty, 12-9. Let's take a look at the America East All-Star teams for both of these two teams, the Vermont Catamounts and the University of Vermont. I'm sorry, the Bearcats and the Catamounts. Taylor Mullen, Ava Vaseline. Carolyn Carrera, number one in the nation, as we mentioned, with cause turnovers. The first team selections between these two teams. On the second team, Kenna Newman, who 
we mentioned earlier, has the goal tonight, but otherwise Vermont has done a very nice job of keeping her in check. Camille Argentieri, part of that defense that has done that on the second team. And then on the all-rookie team, Abby Carroll and Olivia Muscolino, two of those really rising stars, along with Kendall Travis. They've all been outstanding tonight. Vermont, excuse me, Binghamton's gonna really need Kenna Newman to step up here. Vermont's had the, her number so far. We mentioned she was scoreless just a few days ago and the Bearcats need her, Murphy, Carol, all of their stars to really take that next step into climbing back into this. There's 8.05 left to play, plenty of lacrosse left to pull a few back for Binghamton. Starts with the draw. Dead even so far in the draw today. Garrity back there at the draw for Vermont with Afcam, and Garrity comes away with it, slaps it towards the restraining line. It'll be picked up by the Bearcats. Nice little flick there gets knocked out of the stick of Abigail Carroll. She'll pick it up and re-engage. Goes far side. And hear the Vermont coaching staff yelling no foul in the clear and just want their team to have that awareness they're up by three they don't want to have any yellow card situations don't want to make anything easy for the Binghamton offense Catamounts fans who always travel well regardless of the sport starting to get the defense chant going Carroll goes far to the right, 36 on the shot clock. Dumps it down in the middle, nice look there and a goal! Excellent pass leading to the goal by Muscolino. As she goes downstairs to score and make it a 12-10 game. And we said Binghamton needs Kenna Newman and she's delivering when it counts. She's got top side on her defender, head up, found Muscolino wide open in the middle. And that's a veteran player. Binghamton is full of youth. Newman is one of the only veterans on the roster on the starting lineup. And a day like today, a game like today, you need to turn to a player like her in moments like this, and she stepped up. Muscolino, second goal today on that all freshman team, as we just mentioned, and really stepping up today. Back to a two goal game and back to the draw circle for Afcam and Garrity. Picked right out of the air by Afcam. Reverses field, she's doubled and looking for a friend and she finds one. Now Golderman at midfield. She'll carry it up. Golderman has had a really nice game today. Gets inside. Nice look there as she finds Scheidel. Down below, goal line extended. Nobody at X. It'll come back outside to Murphy. Murphy out top to Carroll. Carroll an opportunity to dodge. Terry does an excellent job there. Muscolino will bring it back around. Muscolino spends a lot of time with the ball in her stick. Carroll gets inside, lets it go, and it goes in as she bounces it home to the right side of the keeper. And it's a 12-11 game with 5.56 to go here in the fourth. The Energizer Bunny. <laughs> She's still... Got plenty of legs left. Just under six minutes, going hard to the cage. Finding the back of the net off a split dodge to her left hand into the middle. Like Coach Allen said, her freshmen are fearless. And past two goals scored by freshmen, huge moments. Conference semifinals, they've never been to a conference, game, a conference tournament and they're stepping up. 20, Huge goal. 27th goal of the year for Carroll, just her first of the day, but she's done so many other things for this team. A sign of a true team player is don't care about your stats as long as we win. 
she's been all over and she's been fun to watch today. You see she's been matched up with Vassal on the circle, giving each other a, a tough game. Alternate possession goes to the Catamounts. That is the new rule this year. There is no redraw if the ball fails to go high enough. Kloostra goes down below to Garrity. Vassal. Garrity now looking to work from behind. Nothing there, so she goes outside. Vassal inside. Halloran, nothing, goes behind. 47 to shoot. Ball's on the ground, scooped up nicely there, unsettled. What a save. Manning getting a great piece of it there. Travis ripped that one, and Manning did a nice job. Less than five minutes to go here in the fourth. Outside. Vassal now straight ahead, outside the 12. Garrity working from behind. 30 on the clock, now 27. Garrity keeps that stick nice and high. Vassal had an opportunity, fouled from behind, didn't get the shot off, so she will get a free position with 4.15 to play, looking to advance Vermont's lead to two. After a lot of great defense by Binghamton, Putting Vassal on the line is the last thing you want. See if Manning can come up with another save in this possession. Gets inside. Flag flag is up. And a push from behind. They're Both gonna officials say called it. To the shot, which it did. They pushed her into the crease. She got the shot off. Pushed into the crease. It, she, even though she got the shot off and a flag would go away, when it affects the shot, the officials reward the shooter with another opportunity. You see, Carroll goes behind. Second inside hash for Vassal. This time, Vassal gets inside clean but hits the post. Scooped up by the Bearcats. Huge stop. Binghamton fans are fired up. Double on the sideline. A little bit of trouble there for Alice Hauser, but she gets rid of it going backwards and a smart move by Alice Hauser, the junior out of Cicero. Both teams have been great on the clear. That's something as a coach that you pride yourselves on. 17 out of 19 for Binghamton. Check that 18 out of 20 for Binghamton. 16 out of 16 for Vermont on the clear today. That's impressive especially with how hard both attacks have been riding to get the ball back. Spin back the other way, shoved down there, foul called. A free position. It's an extension there by Carrera. You see her, as soon as your arms come into your body as a defender, you really can't extend. It's very obvious that it's a cross check. Be very conscious of that. It's like an isolation. Murphy. Well done by McDonough. Pushes Murphy down below, goal line extended, but a crease roll there with a head of steam. Here comes Carroll. Down the middle and scores! Nice job to avoid the crease violation as well. And just like that, the Binghamton fans are on their feet, and we are even. Abigail Carroll stepping up when her team needs it. She is so shifty, managed to stay on her feet there. 
avoids the crease, finds the back of the net, throws her stick down. We're all tied up at 12. 28th goal of the year forces a timeout for the Catamounts. As we've mentioned throughout the game, it was a close one last weekend, 11-10. Right now we're headed toward that again with a 12-12 game here at 2.20 to go. Really exciting game. Not surprised that it would come down to the last couple of minutes to determine the winner. So we've seen these momentum switches here, and I'm sure you've been involved in those in your career where you've got the advantage, someone else has the advantage. When you come to a huddle like this and you're the team on the downside of the advantage, what's the conversation like? Just making the appropriate adjustments and focusing on the next play. Having mistake amnesia is super important. You can't worry about what's happened. So be it, move on, learn from the mistakes, and what are you gonna do next? Not trying to force anything, but focusing on the next play and something that our coach always told us is to think about the little things everything else comes easy when you can just focus on picking the ball up off the ground ground ball is always important coaches talk about that as you know we talk with the coaches hey what are you the, what are the keys to this game ground balls cause turnover or, uh, and unforced turnovers are two things that always manage to come up the Bearcats on a nice little run here as they've come back from three goals down to tie this Gonna look inside. It's been all freshmen. Muscolino and then two Carroll goals. Throws that stick over her head in a championship <laughs> mode. Almost slipped and fell as she came into the eight. She's been unbelievable. All over the place. And then the steady hand by Kenna Newman to find Muscolino in that first goal to start closing that gap. Love that tenacity of Abby Carroll. Two goals against this Vermont team last week. Four ground balls, three cause turnovers, three draw controls. It's a little bit of everything. It's a midfielder for you. Kind of player you look for, that player that can do everything for a team, and especially in a sit championship situation like this. Just the second time this Binghamton team has ever been in the tournament. When Coach Allen mentioned that her freshmen play fearlessly, I thought, okay, that's like a typical thing yeah. to say about a freshman, and I get it now. That's legit, yeah. I get it now. Catamounts with the ball. Riley Halloran comes in. Ballard. O'Connor back behind for Garrity working all the way around Bearcats packing that defense in and then bringing it out when the ball comes to their side Ballard in the middle can't connect with Halloran loose ball comes away with in the bear stick of a Bearcat 90 seconds to go that switch to his own defense proving to be successful for Binghamton into the attack zone is Kelly Quinn. Moscolino has it near side. Ordinarily, if you're a coach, you want this ball on the stick of your experienced senior, but if I'm Stephanie <laughs> Allen, I like my freshman. <laughs> Less than a minute to go here, 49 on the shot clock. A five second shot clock, game clock differential. It's just a matter of which freshman. Carroll's gonna take a run at it. Looks inside, pass goes awry, and it was a pass, not a shot. So it'll come away with the Catamounts with 34 seconds to go, game tied at 12. Binghamton needs to ride hard. Nevins gives it up there to Carrera. Check that to McDonough, 11, not one. Clock still running. 18, 17. Halloran. Outside. Vassal slides through, scores! Nice move as she splits the defense. And after the stick check, assuming it's good, the Catamounts will have a one goal lead with 7.8 seconds to go. Wow. 
What an unbelievable take to the cage. Who else? You can't miss her, Coach Braddock says. Certainly not there. Unbelievable dodge. Six goals on the night now for Ava Vassell, but obviously none bigger than that. 7.8 seconds, 13-12. Timeout, Vermont, as Sarah Dalton Craddock, the sixth year coach of this Catamount team, wants to make sure everyone is on the exact same page. 7.8 seconds. Is that enough time, even if you win the draw clean, can you get to the cage? It's got to be picture perfect. And with the way that things have been going, it's taken a little longer for either team to establish possession off the draw. It's going to be have to be the most perfectly clean draw up the field. But Vermont has been doing an unbelievable job putting pressure on the ball right away, which slows down Binghamton naturally. But never say never. Always possible. But it's going to be quite a task for Binghamton to make this happen. I wouldn't be surprised if they start to set up their attack closer to the goal, or at least a couple of them. That way they can heave it downfield. But all smiles on the Vermont bench. Binghamton trying to cook up something good for the last <laughs> 7.8 seconds. But uh, just when I thought we were headed to extra time once again, Ava Bas Basil. The men's bracket is all set. Oh, women's side, sorry about that. It'll be University of Albany against Binghamton or Vermont. Two o'clock here on ESPN Plus. Proceeded by that on ESPN. You will be the men's side. That one not yet final. Vermont leading U Albany right now in the third, 11 to three on the men's side. Binghamton already through to the championship game. So here we go with this draw control. We'll see. Couple of players deep for the Bearcats. Afcam needs to win this clean. Garrity needs to do whatever she can to make sure that Afcam does not. Ball is up, bounces around, clock rolls. Binghamton wins it. Over to the side, ball's on the ground. Time will run out on the Binghamton Bearcats. And for the first time ever, the University of Vermont Catamounts are headed to the America East Women's Championship game. What an unbelievable game. So exciting to the very last seconds. Ava Vassell coming up with the game winner. All hugs, lots of excitement on the Vermont side. So exciting for the, those coaches. Congrats to Vermont. Sarah Dalton Gratis told us, Gratis rather, told us in our call, this has been the goal since she was taking over, is get this team to advance further than it's ever advanced before. New goal now, win the championship. But prior to this game, this was the goal to really get Vermont here. They've been so close, and Vassal helps get them over that hump. She was unbelievable today. Another look at that game winner. Fearless, taking it hard to the cage. She splits up defenses so easily, attacking the seams, attacking the opening, and just putting it low, keeping it simple. Very six, exciting for Six Vermont. goals today for Ava Vassal. Let's not in all of the scoring, let's not forget the defense and the outstanding job that Sophie McLaughlin did in net and that Emily Manning did in net also for Binghamton, but especially McLaughlin, 12 goals allowed, 11 big, big, big saves for the Vermont Catamounts as they move on to the championship game. McLaughlin certainly kept the minute early in the game. She had 10 saves just in the first half alone. Unbelievable effort all around. It was a complete team win from both ends of the field. This one goes to the Catamounts and they'll move on to the championship game. For Alyssa Murray Committee, I'm Rich Becker saying so long from Tom and Mary Casey Stadium. On the campus of UAlbany where the final score is Vermont 13, Binghamton 12. All games airing on the ESPN networks are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN. We'll see you on Saturday at two o'clock for a championship game.